Every car restoration has its highs and lows. Ah, see what I did there? This week I put a crazy amount of time in and my car went from kind of a splotchy gray to a, another gray. Garage time. Every week, my goal in these videos is to provide valuable information to you and inspire you to build your dream car or build something cool in the garage. And this week, to be honest, I struggled trying to find something new in this. As you've probably figured out by now, paint and body work is not my favorite part of the car restoration. But I am getting through it. I have a lot of work to do still. But today there was a big milestone in, in sort of doing the second coat of uh, primer. So I'm gonna share with you some tips that I'm doing differently to kind of keep me pushing through uh, this difficult part in the restoration. I got eight tips for you. Okay, I changed my workflow. I typically um, work on my car on Thursdays, probably eight, nine hours, plus maybe two or three on Wednesday. And that time goes quick. I mean, traditionally, if I'm you know, doing things like creating something new or cutting, fabricating, welding, that time just seems to like, boom, go right by. With this type of work, especially since there's dry times involved and, you know, it's just a lot of tedious, repetitive work, I have changed my method. So now I come out um, one hour per day, um, including the weekends. I do one hour and then I'll spend a little bit of uh, extra time on Thursday because I, I basically blocked out that day from my work schedule. That's my, my car day. So I'm, I'm, doing, um, I'm doing that and it seems to work really well because it's hard to get bored in just an hour. So that's my first tip. My second tip is to buy good material. So you can go to Home Depot and buy some sandpaper and you know sand with your hand and you're just not gonna get good results. You're not gonna get a straight car and I think you end up spending more money. So I purchased, as you guys know, uh, this car is a very low budget build, but this was all purchased on eBay. This um, paper is made by Indasa. Uh, 40 grit, 180 grit, um, 80 grit, uh, 180 and 220. So I've used all of this up until now, even though I'm still in the early phases, and I think overall it's cheaper to use high quality paper. It doesn't clog up. I like these long blocks for things like the door. Um, Porsches have a lot of curves. So I've been using this round block in the sort of fender areas. And then I'm using this in uh, some of the smaller, tighter areas like in the front of the fender. Um, but I use the longest block possible whenever I, I can. It's also really important to spend time in the metalwork phase, you know, getting these panels to fit, because no amount of Bondo and sandpaper and primer is gonna make your panels fit. So all the work, if you've seen my videos um, for the past almost year, um, most of those videos are around getting all these panels to fit together in the metalwork phase. I had to use very little filler on this car. Let me open up the door and show you how, how it looks from the edge. Okay, I'm trying to show you that the door edges here are not all built up with filler. I didn't just, you know, pave over the entire door to make it fit well. This is all very thin. Even the bottom of the door has, you know, just basically it's sheet metal thickness. Here's a look at the front. There are some areas on the back side of this I do need to clean up. So you see it's a little bit uneven, but in general, there's not a huge amount of thickness of the filler on any part of this car. So what you're seeing here is the car in its second coat of epoxy primers. I will put the entire uh, process down in the description below in terms of you know, what grits I used and what steps I've taken. I was going to put the 2K high build primer right on top of this, but I did see once it was in the uh, epoxy primer, I did find a few defects that I, I couldn't see before. And I'm going to let this epoxy primer cure. I think it requires, um, they recommend as many as 48 hours before you put more product on top of this. So I did order some uh, glaze, the dolphin glaze by Upol, And that's gonna fill up just a couple minor scratches that I, I did not block sand out. And then there's just a few little pinholes here and there. Okay. 
Okay, here's a little section on the nose of my car. This is where I did the long hood extension, so it's a little lumpy. So if we look real close, I mean, that's a high spot. That's a tiny bit of metal coming through. And then right down below, this is low. You can see where the uh, filler has not been scratched. And then along the front, so it's kind of more of the same. And then on the fender, this is area two that's low. Yeah, there's, there's spots here where there's just not enough filler. So I'm gonna be doing another application here of filler and try to show you what the guide coat does and how it works. This is just a quick peek of what I've been doing all week long. The other tip I have guys is to keep your Bondo spreaders clean. So this, these are the same two spreaders I've used for the entire car so far. And uh, I just get most of it off after it's just start to set up a little bit, but I just throw it down on a towel and I grab another towel. And this is just uh, paint thinner from the hardware store. And it just kind of wipe it off real easy. especially this leading edge, because you don't want to get lines in the filler when you apply more. All right, this area has had some time to dry, about 20, 30 minutes, and I'm going to show you how the guide coat works. This is dry guide coat. I'll put a link in the description below. But you basically just, you know, rub it on. And the beauty of this stuff, it's going to show the, you know, old versus new. So this is some of the old filler. Uh, this is the new filler. And then this is just the epoxy primer. Okay, I'm going to start with 80 grit here and, um, and then transition to 180. So I got 80, 180. So right away, you can see the color difference. This is the bright color of the filler, and then this is kind of the shadowed, kind of charcoaly color that is yet to be touched. So as we keep going, um, you can see what the block is doing versus what the uh, filler is doing. <laughs> So I'm switching over to 180 now. <clears throat> so as the new blends in with the old, this shadow line just disappears. I don't want to push down too hard because this panel moves because there's a seal below it. <clears throat> now, you just want to let the sandpaper do the work, which is why you should change it very often. 
Sandpaper here is just toast, um, especially on the higher grits. Like, well, this is 180, it's not super high, but I found that it would, it would stop working, it would get clogged up. Part of the reason is because it's epoxy primer, but um, you know, it's easy enough. This is adhesive backed. Just pull it off and uh, put a new one on and it makes things go much quicker. I mean, you're saving time overall, which is why I bought the big roll to begin with. Okay, here's an up close look at uh, what we just did. Um, you can see right here, this is guide coat remaining. And I left it there because I wanted to show the difference. So as I'm going across this gap, it's predictably a little bit low right there in the middle. And now, you know, this is a point of debate. You know, most cars actually dive in at the gaps. I mean, I like it to be probably a little bit better than original where it's, it's pretty flat. That's why I was going across it like this. Um, but for things like this, like there's just a little bit of guide coat remaining right there. I'd probably just, you know, wipe that down with a, with a softer block. Let it depress in a little bit towards the gap. Right here, this all smoothed out just fine. All the guide coat's gone, meaning this is pretty level. There's a little tiny bit of metal showing through right there, a little bit right there. And right here, I kind of left this edge undone because I want to put the light in to really determine, you know, what this radius should be. It tends to get squared off when you use the block. So now you have to come back with the block and go sideways and try to even this out with the correct radius and try to match it to the other side. A lot of work was done on these fenders because these are short hood fenders. A lot of work was done here to uh, maintain this edge. Right here, this is the part that was extended. Um, there was a little low spot. I think it's gone now. You can't really tell where the new filler was and the old filler. There's a slight difference in color right here on the filler. Uh, that kind of depends on how you mix it, but I try to do it the same every time. Right here, this is a little bit of guide coat left. So you can see the new filler is higher than the old filler. And that area between the two is highlighted here with some guide coat. So. I left that there because it would be just a couple, you know, a couple passes and this would be gone. Right here, you can see some sanding scratches. I think you can see that. Those sanding scratches are 80 grit scratches. Those will disappear when you go over it with a 180. And then what I've done, and the link is in the description below, is I start with either 40, go to 80, 120, and then I go over real quick with 220 um, right before I put epoxy primer on. So the next step in this case, where this is nice and like right here, this is pretty much ready for the epoxy primer. I would do 220 with a soft block and then epoxy primer over that. And, and that's just what I'm doing. I'm not telling you guys this is the only way. It's kind of like religion. Everyone has their own idea on how to do this, but that's what I'm doing. Let me show you the soft block. Okay, this block here is, is called the soft block and it's much, it's much uh, softer, you can squeeze it. It actually has two different densities. There's a darker color and then a lighter color. I'm using the darker color and this is 220. So for instance, like on this um, right here where there's additional guide coat, if I just real quickly, you know, this, this cleans right up. So that's what I do just prior to putting the epoxy primer on. That's 220. Um, you can see some sanding scratches there. And uh, that's what I've done for the whole car. I'm not saying I'm an expert at this. I'm just sharing you know, what I'm doing. And hopefully it helps some of you guys if you're curious about what goes on in uh, body repair. There's a reason why body work and painting your car is so expensive because it's very laborious and it's tedious. It's worth every penny in terms of what you have to spend to get your car done. If you're one who doesn't wanna try this, but you're you know, complaining about how expensive it is, then maybe this gives you some idea on, as to why that is. So I am new to this, by the way. Um, I have painted one other car in my lifetime, and that was like 25 years ago. So everything is different now. Materials are different, spray guns, everything is totally different. So. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm learning this as I, as I go and sharing it with you guys. So uh, 
here's the car that I painted. All right, being comfortable and having the car elevated is, is really comfortable um, as you're trying to get these low areas. You know, if I'm sitting on this stool, I can move around, I can get underneath it, I can actually make the car even higher because these stands are adjustable. But I found it really useful to have the car elevated. And the other nice thing is it's not twisted or flexed by putting it on jack stands. It's actually on an angle right now because I only have the stands on one side, but it's supported by the tires. I don't expect that the gaps are gonna be altered because of the way the car is supported. So um, I'm really happy with these tire stands. Of course, I've used them to go underneath the car as well, but for body work, it's really nice. There's no lift in my way. Um, I have full access to the bottom, the sides, the top. I can position it any way I need to, which is, oh, and drink lots of caffeine keeps you awake and stimulated. And then it's rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Obviously, there's um, better places on the internet to learn about how to do the perfect paint job. I am following some instructions by SPI. They have um, some guidelines on how to use product from bare metal all the way up into the clear coat. So I'm following those instructions to a T. Also, um, there's input from you guys that have given me uh, regarding the um, the process as well and I and I'm using those tips as well I highly encourage you to leave me a comment if there's something I can do better I'm absolutely um, looking at those comments and taking that into consideration when it's time to do this the only thing I haven't done is I'm not using the slick sand well I don't think I'm going to use the slick sand I spent a lot of time on the filler stage getting the car to what I think is pretty straight and I'm going to be um, you know, doing some block sanding to evaluate that. If I can't get there, then I will be using slick sand, but my, my budget um, just did not allow for the extra gun and the materials and all that. Slick sand is an awesome product. It's basically a sprayable filler. Um, I skim coated the entire car and that was cost effective. I sanded it, I you know, blocked it, guide coat, blocked it, guide coat. I really think that it's close. Of course, the uh, urethane primer or the 2K primer will, will really reveal how straight it is. But uh, I really do appreciate your comments and that's really helping me get through this as well. I've, I've given you some, some, uh, some things I've done differently to get through this stage. Um, but uh, your comments have, have best definitely been inspiring me too. So thank you for that. Also, good timing this week is Luftenkult. So let's see, Saturday, the day you see this video, um, I will be at the show. I'll do a short, uh, you know, couple uh, minute video on, on what that's like, but I hope to be inspired there. I, I'm sure I will. There's uh, some of the world's best cars will be in attendance and I hope to meet some of you guys. I am going to be choosing a color. That's the uh, kind of the deadline of, of what color I'm gonna choose. And so I, I've uh, come up with a few. I'm gonna leave a poll right here. And uh, I want it to be a classic color. I don't, you know, I'm making this car older than it is by backdating it. And I'm looking back into even 356 colors, um, things that aren't too bright, not too loud. Uh, that just doesn't suit my personality. But the color is, to me, the actual color is a little bit less important than the build quality. Because if things aren't lining up and it just doesn't flow well, then it doesn't matter what color it is, I'm not gonna like it. Please uh, vote for, for your favorite color. I've only given, I think, three or four choices, but uh, feel free to chime in on that and uh, help me out. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Um, there likely won't be a video next week um, unless something cool happens. I think it's gonna be a lot more of the same. I already have the filler on the driver's side. So I'm gonna be putting the epoxy primer on the driver's side and then probably the 2K high build on the, the, uh, the passenger side. And it's really, like I said, rinse, lather, repeat. Um, I don't know if there's anything I else I can bring to the, the video that's new, but if you have suggestions or comments of what you'd like to see, uh, please let me know. And if I don't see you, Check it out on Instagram. I'll probably post some project pictures. It's uh, Instagram at agaragetime.com. 
Enjoy your week, guys, and thank you so much. We'll see you soon.